Hello and welcome back to the Roper Report Extra Podcast. I'm joining you after a win. I said we'd win. I think we all kind of felt it, but they had us worried for a little bit, didn't they, with that early goal being conceded. But we've got Luton coming up on Saturday. I think we're all feeling quite confident. We've got a man who knows both teams quite well. Uh, I think you might know who he is. Bit of a bit of a Sunderland legend. It's uh, Mr. Carlos Edwards. How are you doing, Carlos, mate? How are you doing? Yeah, not bad. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Run us through what you're up to at the moment. Some people would be interested. Where are you playing at the moment, Carlos? I'm I'm just um, kicking a ball around. <laughs> <laughs> are you putting in any uh, any balls in any top corners? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, not not lately, not lately. I'm still um, doing a bit with um, Woodbridge. Obviously, people who don't know that's in Suffolk and obviously down at Ipswich. At the same time, I'm doing obviously finishing up my my coaching license. I just did the B license and just you know taking off all the necessary boxes to to confirm my um, certificate at the moment. It seems like it was only five minutes ago though you were playing on the right wing for Sunland. Um, how do, how does time fly? You know, I was speaking to my missus the other day about it. And to be fair, and um. You know, every time I, I, I go on um, social media, on Twitter or something, obviously, ever so often, they all people, I think everyone loved, sometimes love to live in the past. And it, it still bring back trills when you look back at some of the goals I've scored and obviously some of the performances, not just the goals, but um, I should say a team effort, squad effort, club effort, coaching players effort, and however you want to put it. And it it do sometimes seem like it was just yesterday or just around the corner it, it happened and when you do realize it's it's been what 11 years if it's so much Long, longer than you would anticipate you know where we're at at the moment it's um it, it's very much like when you were when you were at the club when you first sort of joined where i know from speaking to you over the past few months you keep up to date with Sunland, you call us we um yeah. which i think is complete testament i think you know how we felt about each other in that relationship but did you manage to catch the match on Saturday and do you think watching the game it felt a little bit like when you know Roy Keane was there and you were there and, and Quinny was there you do sometimes and sometimes you do feel for the for the, well, the fans and first and foremost because I mean if you, you're just looking at the support that the guys and they got seeing obviously what we went through in the last two years consecutive getting relegated no one wants to do it. and you can see the fans coming out in their numbers. I don't think there's any League One team in the history of of the um, English football would have 30 plus thousand fans coming to support them. And that's testament to the, 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 the fans to show their loyalty and obviously the backing of the players and, and, and the support of the club in that aspect. And you know when it's obviously you you were at the club when when Niall was here and sort of you, you left us. I think Ellis sort of came on board, and now it's obviously a, a really different world. Uh, looking at obviously Stuart Donald coming in, and you've got Juan Satori. Uh, you, you've obviously got this big, huge change, uh, and that has happened. But again, like I was saying before, you know, it really did feel kind of similar when when uh, Roy was there and he, he brought in certain players and I suppose we're division below but the idea is the same as it was when you were here to get that promotion push but I mean it's been a pretty horrible place to play at some in the past few years but Saturday it just felt like a different beast it felt like it did 11 years ago and you know what's it what what is it like to play in a crowd like that? Do you think the players are going to, that performance, that result, that atmosphere, will that propel them to have a run? Do you think like maybe you did where I think we lost one in about 30 games or something like that? But I mean, if if doesn't tell the players a lot by the fans coming out and giving that support, then they shouldn't put that red and white stripe on. You know, it's 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 a bit of pride. Sometimes when you're playing for that badge, it's it's pride. It's, it's something that you that's what you live for. I mean, yeah, we do moan as players when we out in the freezing cold to train for <laughs> for train for an hour and a half. You know, but saying that, the fans are the ones comes out in their numbers to give you that support. And if it is that they cannot see or you know pull their fingers out and realize that the fans are there to to push them and to give them that momentum to kick start the season and to continue and as i said before they they they're not allowed they 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 shouldn't be there wearing that red and white stripes you, i mean you have to be you know you have to be hardcore I, i'm not saying that you're going to go out there deliberately to have a horrible game I mean, the best players in the world have the worst of games sometimes. You know, what if the fans see that you're given 100% regardless of the outcome, 
yeah, it's going to be a bit of sweet, but at least they're going to go away with their heads down and thinking, you know, the lads and they did give a go. But looking in the past, when I, when I was there, obviously Niall was there. He brought Roy in. I think at that first time, Roy obviously had a core of the, the, the team, the squad from the previous season. Obviously, he let a few go and he brought in a few additional ones. And I think he took his time at that point in time to bring in players that could have finished the jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, it might have needed a few things to tweak or two, but it wasn't a drastic change where it was going to disrupt everything that we were building towards. And as you can tell, the rest is history. You know, we went from being what, 12, 13th in the tail by December or something like that. And as you say, we went to, we went on to win pff, how many games? I, I, I think I lost count. There were so many bloody games. I lost count. <laughs> it was a good time. <laughs> it was a good time. And and the thing about it is that the good times, is t- it's, it's, it's right around the corner. The lads and they just need to open their eyes, you know, and it would be back. It would be back. And I think, you know, obviously because... Saturday's opponents are Luton and obviously you you know from speaking to you in the past I know you have an affection for Luton as well and also Wrexham beforehand but um with all due respect towards Luton what is it like and coming from like a club like Luton to Sunderland in terms of the expectations and and the size of the club is it chalk and cheese or you know the same level of expectation exactly the same I mean it's, it's it's just a different environment um as a professional you want to treat every club you go to in the manner that it should be treated, regardless of where the, the, the club is in, in terms of where it's based and where position they are. You, you, you go to a club and you try to, you know, roll your sleeve up and try to treat it to the best of your, to your ability because at the end of the day, they, they are your employers. You, you want to respect the badge. You want to respect, you know, whoever is associated with the club. And then leaving, obviously leaving Wrexham to go to Luton was a big step. Um, and even leaving Luton to come to Sunderland was even bigger. But I didn't know what to expect. Obviously, I, I had an idea because obviously Sunderland is Sunderland at the end of the day. It's a team supposed to be in the premiership without a shadow of a doubt. And going there, you're thinking, you know, what next? You know, I have to up my game. I have to do things in a way that... And then obviously we got our bloody manager at the time who was Mr. Roy Keane, who was um, saying... <laughs> <laughs> his name alone just sell, you know, goosebumps down some players' spine. But, you know, that's another thing. But as as a professional, you want to go ahead with, you know, and do things in a, in a manner that it's not going to cause too much harm to yourself, your family, and obviously to the club. And I think... um you know, with with Sunderland as a, a club as well, and you know, I I always love that when we speak, you, you call us we. What 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 is it that makes you? Because I feel you have this huge affection for Sunderland. Everyone can hear it, and and I've you know from a couple of times we've spoken over the past few months, I can feel that massively as well. But what is it that makes Sunderland such a almost like a family club? I mean, recently we've lost that, but it's coming back, and that win on Saturday it felt like that. But what is so special about Sunderland that? players want to call us we and you feel so connected to a place that you were born thousands of miles away from i think that i think the air that um the naughties have it's um it's contagious <laughs> <laughs> i agree no, i know yeah it's just you know it's it's a good question you know um without a shadow of a doubt it's 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 a question there that you know i think a lot of people will ask themselves um even even the missus obviously she is you know she is a fan i think the, the the chemistry that the welcoming that you get as a player coming into the club it's second to none it's like the way that they welcome you is like there's no better club than than us so whenever you leave here regardless of what i think the first thing going to come out your mouth is we because once as they say once a black cat always a black cat is it i hope so yeah <laughs> and you know, so yeah, it's 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 the affection that the club has towards the players. It's 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 something that obviously it's not. I think I'll have to take it to my grave. And I think if I give you an answer now, why is that it is like that? I could be telling a, a lie. I could be not giving you the answer that a lot of people would love to hear. But 
all I can say is that I am I'm a red and white, regardless of what. You know, um, yeah, obviously, he, I always take the the mick out of obviously one of the coaches at um, at Woodbridge. He's a he's a he's a black and white. That's a shame. I know. <laughs> <laughs> With a banter with him, obviously Woodbridge plays in black and white stripes. So I always try to take the mick out of him and say, well, next season we're gonna be playing in red and white. Yeah, or he <laughs> he is not happy with that at, at all. He is not. So, but you know, it's 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 all good banter. You know, I'm just letting people know I'm, I'm putting my foot down when it comes to that red and white stripe. <laughs> you, know, you know, they they can fight me from now till. You know, I will always be. You know, Sunderland will always be close to my heart. And and it's funny you. Um, I think I think you wore number seven at a few clubs, but obviously you, you were known as our number seven. And I've noticed your Twitter has number seven, and uh, Danny yeah. Collins has his number thirty nine in in his email address. And I said that was your squad number when you joined Sunderland. He's like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it's funny, both of you play in black and white now, but uh, yeah, I feel I feel very much that I'm speaking to someone who's red and white. Yeah. Um, now we we had quite a lot of conversations last season, you know, via WhatsApp when things were going for want of a better word, pretty bad. Um, and I think, you know, we spoke an awful lot about, and you spoke earlier also about players wanting to pull on that shirt and wanting to respect the badge. I think one thing I quite liked about speaking to you last season is that I felt like you could feel the pain of those players not putting the shift in that you probably wish you could. And how much did that bother you last year? It bothered me even now to this day as we speak. <laughs> It does. I mean, you look, you're looking back, and I'm thinking, boy, I'm, I'm, I'm was always looking at my phone to see if I'm going to get a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's frustrating when you're not playing, obviously sitting on the bench or you're injured. When you know that you've you've done you've done a lot of hard work as an ex player to put the club where they are, and for it to be where it is now. It's something that you're thinking, well, why did you, why did I have to do on these guys and they just really did just go all, you know, go away so easy? Not not even putting up a fight. Because if they think they did, if they thought they put up a fight for the last two years, boy, then they ain't seen nothing. But they, they, they need to go do some street fighting. Then they will know what a <laughs> fight is. Because these guys, you know, we could make excuses. You know, we could, we could point fingers at the, the manager, which always is the case. The players are the ones that don't take responsibility for anything because, yeah, the fans will vent. Most of the times, the, the fans will vent at the manager. On the day of the game, a few, few players might get a bit of bollocking. But the thing about it, easy to point fingers. If the guys don't look at themselves, then you're fighting a losing battle. In a game, you could you can maybe get away with dragging along two players. When you start dragging along three, four, five players in a game, boy, you are doing overtime, and you're not getting paid for overtime. I can I can guarantee you that. In my 18, 19 years of professional football, I don't think I ever get paid for overtime. You know, but saying that, it's it's a team effort. You know what what as I always say, what we had in that 06, 07 season. The chemistry we had on and off the pitch was, listen, I don't think it was, I don't think I've been at a club where it have players like that. We used, it, we used to demand a lot from each other. And that demand wasn't something that was taken lightly because we knew exactly what each other's strengths and weaknesses are. And we used to help each other along the way on and off the pitch. We would have that chemistry. Training would, training would be over. The lads will stay back at least a half an hour, 45 minutes after training, have a bit of banter, have something. You know, you're looking at these guys now who's playing professionally, and the first thing they do is like is someone is on social media, they they're gonna meet up someone, they're gonna do some golf. You can chill back. And you know, sometimes I do say, you know, relax, stay, stay back on the training ground for an extra half an hour, kick a few balls. Maybe the manager may not want you to do it, but you can still go into the changing room and have a bit of banter. You know, plan a few things. Go, go out and you know, have a few drinks. Take take your missus out, take your boyfriends out, and whatever it is the case, the case mm -hmm. you know, and and enjoy yourself outside of it. You know that that brings a bit of a a unity, 
you know so when you know obviously if you got that unity of the pitch and that togetherness you know when you go onto that pitch it's a different kettle of fish it's something totally different and it only takes a few bad apples it's i, I mean everyone remembers how strong that unit was sort of yeah. from december onwards and, and it followed on into the season afterwards with like last minute winners last minute goals but then obviously we've spoken before about certain characters without naming names that came in shortly afterwards around Roy's time and you could maybe pick two or three bad apples and that was a, a poor season for us in the end because we just narrowly escaped relegation and I feel like over the past few years we've had maybe like six or seven bad apples every single game and when you watch the, I don't know if you watched the game on Saturday because I know obviously you, you may have been playing but from what you've seen of Saturday did you feel Obviously, it's only one game, but could you see players that were fighting for the shirt on Saturday to get that win? Yeah, I, I could. I, you could see it, you, even even the way. But it, it tells a lot. Also, it tells a lot when you concede a goal, and it tells a lot when you score a goal, right? Yeah. And we had this diehard mentality that even though we went a goal down, we we believe in ourselves that. We can we can win this game. We regardless of what, even though the lads and they went one nil down, you 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 could still see the a, a little negative, but at the same time you can see the guys and they're rolling up them sleeves to say, you know what, lads, we we can still get this. We can still bring something back from it, and that's what you need to have. You need to have that little self belief. You need to believe in your players, believe in your teammates, because if you don't, you 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 fight in a losing battle. You know, if you go one nil down in the first minute in a game, what's going to happen for the next 89 minutes? Well, you're going to be like, oh, God, we're going to be like, you know, is it this going to happen again? Nah, listen, roll your sleeve up, pull your fingers out. At the end of the day, it's eight, 90 minutes plus injury time, whatever it is you want to put on, I don't know, whatever, two, three minutes or so. Listen, I've seen games won and lost. I've been on the end of some of them and it's not a nice feeling. So it's not end until what is it? What is it say? The old lady said what? The fat, the fat lady sings. <laughs> yeah, one of those. Until someone sings, and, and I'll be singing, then you can say, you know what, fair enough. But you can still see the lads. Yeah, it's 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 a young bunch of lads, but at the same time, you can see they, they they. I think they have what it takes. Yeah. To to, to go and with the backing. As I said before earlier, these guys in them have fans who are so loyal, who's coming out, you know, and they have to open their eyes and see that for themselves. That Listen, if these fans are coming out, you know, we need to show them that we are worthy of wearing that Sunderland kit. It's what it's all about, I think. And it's easy for me to say as a fan, but I feel you feel the same way as a player as well. Definitely, I've I've felt it. You know, uh, it, it's 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 hard sometimes to look. It's like, you know, you're thinking every time when people talk to me and I say, "Oh, Sunderland, on there," like, "Oh, cows," I'll be like, "God, don't don't even mention it, man," because it's like it's like I'm it's like me. I'm it's like I'm playing. I'm not even there, but it it hurts so much knowing that obviously we we work so hard, and then it's just you know just feel just going away with the wind. Yeah, fell through the trap door. I think, funny, you, you mentioned about a few of the, the young boys and you felt they had what it take, what it takes, sorry. But um, the man who scored the winner on Saturday in the 96th minute is a man who plays kind of in your position on that right wing. And although he's uh, he's American um, and he's he's obviously our current number 11, not number 7, um, he actually scored the header in the same corner that you almost put a hole in about 11 years ago. Mm. Is there any players, including Lyndon Gooch, that have impressed you when you've had time to catch us, which I believe has been quite you know, frequent? Oh, boy, it's just changed up a lot, to be fair. Because, to be fair, I'll, I'll be very honest, I was in and out of watching the game on um, on Saturday, catch the game as I would love to. But, as I said, it's it's early and during the season, obviously, there are there are going to be one or two players who's going to catch catch my eyes, and I'm I'm hoping that if 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 it is I do miss one player that you know he can prove me wrong if I don't pick a player that that deserves you know eye catching performance or eye catching season, you know, 
I wish he proved me wrong and proved a lot of people wrong. But saying that, it's a good bunch of lads. And obviously with a, a young manager at the same time and, you know, with a good fan base, with a good backing. Obviously, they got my backing also. I'm lost for words because I'm I'm, I'm just thinking about, of like, you know, so much when i in the past that I just hope these guys and they could just roll their sleeves up, to be honest, and, you know, give a good account of themselves. And it's funny, you, you mentioned before about, obviously, I'm, I'm mentioning individuals such as Lyndon Gooch, maybe George Honeyman, obviously the new captain. But I think, you know, you mentioned something before about it being a team effort. And that, that actually did feel like that on Saturday. There was a couple of murmurs that maybe our centre-halves didn't have a good first half. And um, obviously, Oviedo came on and did very well, a player who may or may not be here. But I think what you were saying before and, and the comparisons to what you your experiences of Sunderland are both as a fan and as a player is a good team ethic where they all back each other up and and through our time as fans or through my time as a, I'm 32 and um, obviously I remember that under Peter Reid I remember that under Roy Keane that team ethic there was no real star players and I, I feel like maybe that's where we've been going wrong for a while spending big money on big players and then Saturday felt like a real team effort and I think maybe maybe you're right in saying that it shouldn't be about individuals impressing you. It should be about the team and all pulling sort of together. It just coincidentally, I just reminded myself that his header went in the same top corner as your goal against Burnley. So um, do you still remember that one? <laughs> I still do, to be fair. <laughs> it's a good thing in a way that you said that because, I mean, it was well and good to, to have that team effort, but... Until you put your foot down, I mean, obviously Dino was our captain, but we had a lot of other leaders in the in the group. That if you came off the place, that listen, you'd be put in your place regardless of who you are. And one thing I would, one thing I love about Roy is that he will let the players deal with whatever matter is going on in the changing room. Mm -hmm. He would never get involved unless he has been brought into that. And this is what the players need to do. They need to try to resolve things on their own. If they if if they you can't come to some kind of understanding, then you can bring the manager in, you know, and he might give his input. But he all Roy always used to let the lads and they deal with whatever matter that needs to be dealt with. And I think that was built for success. Hence the reason why we went on to win the championship. You know, as I said before, if any player was coming out of that that line, he would have been put in his place. Roy used to obviously told players that, you know, they never took his... Because I can remember one incident, obviously we went on that unbeaten run and then we played Colchester away and we got, we got battered. I, I can remember it like yesterday, just like my goals and the other goals. We absolutely got chewed up and spit right back out because that was a reality check. You know, I think we just took our foot off the pedal a bit and Colchester got, deservedly got what they, they, they deserved. And that was the three points. We lost 3-1 in that game. And we, it gave us a bloody eye opener to say, listen, we need to buck up here because, you know, if we think that we're going to just stroll through because we went on a nice unbeaten run, Oh, we had a diff we had something that we needed to put ourselves in check, and I think we went on the rest of the season unbeaten after that. But that's just to show you, you can't be too complacent because, regardless of what is going on, and you think you walk around with that chip on your shoulder, there's always someone there to flick that chip off e so easily unless you don't, you know, protect it. And it's, uh, it's funny you mentioned about Roy Keane. Um, obviously, Roy Keane is a personality. When he came in as manager, a lot of Sunderland fans knew about him. Maybe not Roy Keane, the manager, but Roy Keane is the person. And I think a lot of Roy Keane, the person, did come through as a manager. And for Sunderland, he was great. You know, I think most Sunderland fans would agree with me on that. Um, obviously, we've got an, a new man in there who's maybe a little bit different. And with all due respect to Jack Ross, he's he's not as well known as a character as, yeah. as Roy Keane was. But Jack seems to have this kind of steely, fierce kind of Scottish determination in the same way that Roy Keane did, but slightly Irish. Um, you probably know as much as, as, as I do and, and the fans do about Jack Ross, but how have you found Jack Ross in the opening kind of throws of pre-season and, and the interviews that you've caught of him? I think I think he, he, he is passionate. You can see it in him. He's enthusiastic. 
you know, he he wants to do well. I think, I mean, it's it's silly of me to say he wants to do well. I think everyone wants to do well, but you can see that he wants to take the club from where there's, you know, and 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 kickstart. I do hope and I wish that it is the season that we got the momentum going back up. If not the case, give him a bit of time, and then we see next season. But I'm I'm. Me, I, I'm, I'm rushing it. I, I want success overnight, me. I want success. Same. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't. Well, that's me. That's just how I am. You know, that's just how I'm built. I'm, you know, yeah, I'm laid back, but I want success. If, if, if I see something, I take advantage of it. And I think that's what the players and the, the, the management staff need to do. You know, obviously the owners and the, the board needs to back him wherever it is. Take your time. Don't make too much rush. Um, drastic. Um, Decision, you know, take your time, sit down on it with a pinch of salt and, you know, see what's the best outcome of how things can go about. But, you know, hopefully it, 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 it would be good. And obviously, as I, you know, going back to the, the, the gaffer in that way, the players need to support him. The players need to, how to say, you, you, the players need to reflect what he is. He wants to be successful. So the players have to have that successful way of thinking successful way of playing things may not happen as you do on the training ground but you have to improvise so you have to have that you know you 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 complement each other as you know you sometimes you always say as husband and wives they, they complement each other boyfriend girlfriend they complement each other you have to look at it in the football aspect because it's a relationship where where it's like the relationship the fans have with the players relationship the manager has with the fans and vice versa the players need to have that relationship with the manager and it needs to be a positive relationship because we need to be going in the right direction and it needs to be with a bit of love, a bit of, you know, caressing, you know, in that way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got you know, you to treat it as a relationship, you know, and, 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 and relate, when I mean in a relationship in that way is that it's something that, it's 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 hard to break. It's a bond that it's really really hard to break. The only time that needs to be broken is when the manager and the players decide to say, okay, that's it. You know, we, we really can't go further. You know, I've done my best, and you know, hopefully that is not the case. Yeah, same. And, and I've been really impressed with with Jack so far. I mean, we're, we're one week into the season, but it's 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 been a a whole load more positive than it's felt for many, many, many months, if I'm honest. But um, I was looking back at the last time we played Luton. Now you might remember this. Um, but that was the day we won the league, five 0 What 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 is Kenilworth Road like for an away side? Um, do you think it will be a, a tough game? Do you think we'll struggle? Um, or do you, do, you, do you think these players, based on Saturday's game, have enough about themselves to bring, to bring maybe not a 5-0, but maybe a 1-0, a 2-0? Um, you have experience of both. It, it, me, me playing at Cannon Road for Luton, it's, I think I've had a lot of success there. A lot of the big clubs that... We, we played in the likes of Wolves, Crystal Palace, Reading, Leicester. All the team that was flying in the league and stuff came to Kenilworth Road. We we let, put them in their place you know? and they walk away with their their heads down because we took everything. We took three points. So all I can say is not just because it's Luton. A lot of people might just say Luton. Oh, wow. It's, it's, it's a, you know, whatever hole that they want to call it. It's not. You have to give them their respect. You give every team their respect, you know, in that way. So the players need to go there and be on their game because, as I said before, Sunderland is a big scalp, regardless of what any team that Sunderland plays against in League One, other clubs want to take their scalp. And it's going to happen from now till it's always going to be like that. And these players need to be ready for what is ever thrown at them. And they need to be ready, not just to take whatever is thrown at them, they need to give back because there's only so much you can take. You need to be ready, roll your sleeve up and, you know, 
give a good account to yourself because it's 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 a bit intimidating if it's a full house i mean it's not it's not much to fill it up but <laughs> you know but still it's 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 a nice atmosphere when the, the fans are behind them and i think it would be it would be a, a, a special game you know once the lads and they they're ready for it and Luton are one of those teams as well, like, you know, with all due respect, are expected to be in and around, even though they've just recently been promoted. They're, they're on an upward trajectory as well, the same as we're hoping to be. Um, they got beat on Saturday, but it was a way to Portsmouth, so it's, it's not going to be an easy game. It's not. Honestly, it's not going to be an easy game. And the thing about it, even even worse, it's their first home game of the season. So, you know, it's going to be a full house. You know, yeah, they... What was the score? They lost 1-0 or something like that? Yeah. The, the first game? So, they have everything. This this home game for Luton is like the first game of the season. You know, the fans are going to be buzzing. Everybody's going to be ready, you know, you know, eager. Because, yeah, Sunderland is coming to town. So, they want to get... And then, maybe not much people who was there 11 years ago when we spanked them are going to be there. But... It's going to be circulating. That's how football is. You know, they're going to be like, yeah, you guys beat us and got us relegated. Now look where you are, blah, blah, blah. So they want to try to get the better of you, which will happen. But yeah. isn't they just need to be professional and just say, you know what? Well, okay, we come in here. Let's see what you got. And we show you what we got. I think... Um... Yeah, you know, it's been it's been really good to catch up again, and it's nice to have this conversation recorded for the fans. I think, um, you know, of all the of all the players since I've wrote for or report that I've interviewed, you've always had the, the one with the biggest smile, and you're always the one that speaks so fondly of us. It's always an absolute pleasure. But as I ask all my guests before I let you leave, what's your prediction for Saturday? Two nil to us. I was hoping you'd say to us, <laughs> and by that you mean Sunderland, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I, I wouldn't normally, I wouldn't normally say that, but obviously this is going to be going out to a fair few Sunderland fans. Is there anything you wanted to kind of cover off since, since you've got an opportunity, Carlos? <sighs> when you, when, when is Sunderland going to pick up the phone and give me a call <laughs> to join the academy? That's what I love. That's what I want. And that's what I'm waiting for. You know. So, but at the same time, I'm, I'm always here. I'm always looking at the scores. I'm hoping sooner rather than later to come visit the stadium to maybe watch a few games, you know, maybe come up for a weekend or a couple of weeks and just obviously just interact with the fans. You know, I miss you guys a lot and, you know, hopefully that we can, you know, take off what, you know, finish off where we left off in the last 11 years. Well, I, I think I speak on behalf of every Sunderland fan when I say you're always welcome back, Carlos. All right, uh, without sounding too cheesy, we, we played us a really good time, got really good memories of you, and obviously you've got really good memories of us. It's been an absolute delight to interview you yet again. Let's hope for a more successful season, and let's hope to see you back on your side soon, eh? Top man, not a problem. Top man, <laughs> you look after yourself, Carlos. Thanks too, as too. always for doing it. Bye, bye, bye. I think you know it's it's been a really good um time to speak to Carlos um especially after you know the preseason we've had the 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 upheaval we've had uh, the the change in chairman manager and things like that because it's nice to hear someone who only played for us a mere 11 years ago that wasn't part of that period mad successful era but was part of a good period of um time to be a Sunderland player and a Sunderland fan and he speaks so passionately about us and honestly we've we've sort of spoke on and off since our interview and he always speaks about us as we or as us and I think if that doesn't tell the players that are coming into the club uh, just now and the young lads like Lynn and Gooch and Honeyman who I'm sure are aware of this and the likes of Glenn Leuvens that are coming in you know um, the likes of Charlie White who will be June to see if that doesn't feed into them that a player who played for us, we forget this, but it was only two seasons um, Carlos was here. He speaks about us with such passion because, as he said, Sunderland is infectious. Like, we know that as fans, but to hear it coming from a player, I mean, if that doesn't fire you up and let you know what football club you're at, how could you not want to reignite this? And, uh, you know, we're talking about one game and maybe I'm being overambitious and we could be speaking next week after a defeat to Luton, but... I spoke about this in an article not too long ago. It will take patience. 
but it feels like, and this has been used a lot, we've got our club back again a little bit. Um, hopefully it continues with another three points on Saturday. I want to go to the top of that league and I never want to stay away from it. Um, as Carla said, I'm greedy. You know, I want success immediately. Um, and hopefully we can have as good a times as I remember under Carlos this season. Um, it'll be in League One. But um, thanks for checking in. I really hope you enjoyed something a little bit different. Um, obviously interviewing a former player of both. We spoke a little bit about the past rather than necessarily just always the future and the game on Saturday. Um, probably going to try and do that again in the future if you did enjoy it. So do let me know if you had fun with it. Thanks for checking in. Again, as always, with the Roker Report Extra Podcast. And uh, enjoy your weekend, lads. Here's three points. <laughs>